colonies of benevolence represent one of the earliest initiatives to exterminate poverty on a national scale. Based on the ideas of the Enlightenment, seven agricultural colonies were established, an advanced concept to re-educate the poor and the needy. They can be recognized by these features. The fact that these domestic colonies house different target groups of poor people. The structure of the landscape. The landscape was specifically designed for the different groups of the poor who lived here. Families, orphans or vagrants who worked the land under supervision. Building and planting that is representative of this social experiment. But how did this landscape come about? The Netherlands about 200 years ago. Napoleon had left the newly founded United Kingdom of the Netherlands in crippling poverty. A third of the population, two million people are poor and unable to provide for themselves. That had to change. The question was how? A group of prominent Dutch citizens proposes an innovative concept that, even by today's standards, is exceptional in both scale and impact. Idealist Johannes van den Bos is prepared to actually realize the scheme with the support of the government and the king. This is how he describes it himself. We establish settlements far from the main cities, namely in sparsely populated Drenthe, where there are large areas of land not yet used for cultivation. From all over the country, we bring the cities poor and needy together there to clear the uncultivated land ready for farming so that they can grow their own food. The combination of work, discipline, education, healthy country air and religion will do them good and return them to society as better people. Man forms the landscape and the landscape shall form the man. Over the course of seven years, seven colonies of benevolence were established. Paupers lived in families in small houses with a piece of land. In other locations, vagrants, beggars and orphans lived in groups in square-shaped institutions. The new residents cleared 80 square kilometers of uncultivated land and tree-lined alleys were constructed. All of this followed a linear structure designed by Johannes van den Bos. This attracted considerable international interest and visitors. There was a high level of public services in the colonies of benevolence, a health insurance fund, care for the elderly, a hospital, agricultural training and compulsory education for boys and girls from the age of six. While in many European countries and in the Netherlands and Belgium, this would not be regulated by law for another hundred years. But the large-scale experiment in social reform and elevation of the paupers turned out differently than expected. The idea was to return the colonists to society as better citizens. But in practice, it often didn't work out that way. Due to financial problems, a number of colonies ended up in the hands of the state. Here, the focus shifted from eradicating poverty to tackling vagrancy, treating mental health issues and even traditional criminality. This stigmatized the people who lived in the colonies. The remaining colonies stayed under the control of the Society of Benevolence. Nonetheless, some 100,000 people were re-educated here. Today, at least one million people are descended from them, and the cultural landscapes of the colonies of benevolence are still clearly recognizable. The mottos on the facades of the historic buildings, the majority are still standing, some of which have gained new functions, and of course, the straight tree-lined alleys and the structured landscape. Parties in the Netherlands and Belgium work together to maintain the colonies of benevolence. Residents, companies, farmers and land managers in the areas are intensely involved. There are several visitor centres from which to explore the colonies of benevolence. For more information on a visit to the colonies, kolonienvanveldadigheid.eu In brief, this is a living landscape in which people live and work.